now we are going to start an important topic sequences and series uh, you have already done one sequence which is uh, sequences also called as progression some sequences so you have already done with arithmetic progression so in 11 standard uh, there are two more progressions geometric progression and harmonic progression we have to discuss these followed by series now basically what is sequence a sequence is a collection of numbers arranged in some order, definite order, and obtained in succession according to some definite rule. This is very important. If you just collect few things like, uh, say, uh, whiteboard, chalk, then uh, water, this is not sequence, right? Or if you just say 11, uh, then lambda, 22, minus 37. This is not a sequence. So sequence is a collection of numbers. Of course, first example was not correct because they were not numbers. A sequence is a collection of numbers arranged in some order and obtained in succession according to some definite rule. Okay. Now the individual numbers forming a sequence will be called as terms of the sequence. Since their order is important, they are usually denoted by what? Terms are usually denoted by, say, uh, one minute. What is this? P1, P2, P3, dot, 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 Pn, or in some cases, A1, A2, A3, up to An. Okay. So these are the terms of sequence. Pn is nth term of a sequence. This is an important notation. Pn is nth term of a sequence. And if you enclose Tn, listen to me carefully. If you enclose Tn in a circular bracket, then it is to be read as sequence Tn. I repeat, this is this notation is used for a sequence whose nth term is Pn. Okay. Now another important notation. Sn. What is Sn? Sn basically stands for sum of the SUM sum, sum of the first n terms of the sequence. So obviously Sn will be what? P1 plus T2 plus T3 up to what? Up to Tn. What will be S3? S3 is not sum of any three terms. S3 is strictly sum of the first three terms. That is P1 plus T2 plus P3. Okay. Now we are going to derive an important result that Pn is nothing but Sn minus Sn minus 1. So if we know Sn, then we can easily find nth term of that particular sequence. Now how to prove this? See, proof will not be asked in exam, but it is better if you know the proof. What is Sn? It is T1 plus T2 up to Tn. Can you tell me term before Tn? Yes, it is Tn minus 1, obviously. Okay. What will be Sn minus 1? It will be T1 plus T2 up to Tn minus 1. Subtract one from other. So Sn minus Sn minus 1 will be, now tell me what, what remains, what remains is only Tn. I hope this is clear to you. So what is the formula for nth term of any sequence? Tn is given by Sn minus Sn minus 1. Now we are in a position to discuss three sequences which are included in the syllabus. Of course, you will find that in the first exercise, they have given sums on geometric progression. 
uh, because you had done arithmetic progression in 10 standard only. Now, three sequences, arithmetic, then geometric, and the third one is harmonic. These three sequences are also called as progressions. Progression, not regression, progressions. So arithmetic progression, geometric progression, and harmonic progression. Okay, so we are going to discuss these three. Uh, of course, in the syllabus, they have uh, started with geometric progression. We revise arithmetic progression. So the first part is AP. This is standard short form of arithmetic progression. A sequence is said to be a sequence is said to be an arithmetic progression that is AP if the difference between any two consecutive terms, the word consecutive is very important. If the difference between any two consecutive terms is always constant. That is, if for a sequence Tn plus 1 minus Tn is always constant and is equal to D. I hope this is clear to you. Okay. So a sequence is said to be an arithmetic sequence if the difference between any two consecutive terms is always constant. The first term of the sequence is usually denoted by A and the constant difference, common difference is denoted by D. Okay. Now you have to remember two important formulae. The first one is nth term of an arithmetic progression. It is a plus n minus 1 into d. I repeat, sums on arithmetic progression will not be asked, but there are few sums which is rather which are combinations of arithmetic progression and geometric progression or combination of AP, GP and HP also. For that, you should know all these terms. You should know formula for nth term, formula for sum of the first n terms also. Okay. So Tn is a plus n minus 1 into d. And what is Sn? Sn is basically n upon 2 into in bracket a plus Tn. But Tn is a plus n minus 1 into d. So the same is n by 2 twice a plus n minus 1 into t. Okay, you have to remember both the forms. Then concept of arithmetic mean. Suppose a, b, c are three numbers in arithmetic progression. Then the middle number b is called as an arithmetic mean between a and c. Clearly, b minus a is c minus b. Why? Because they are in a, p. So 2b is a plus c. So what is B arithmetic mean A plus C upon 2? Now, listen to the next statement carefully. Suppose A, then uh, M1, M2, Mn, B. Suppose these terms are in arithmetic progression. Then M1, M2 up to Mn. How many? N numbers. M1, M2 up to Mn are called as N arithmetic means between A and B. I repeat, suppose there are N numbers between first and last terms of an arithmetic progression, then those N numbers are defined to be what? N arithmetic means between A and B. So this statement is important. We can introduce as many arithmetic means as we want between any two numbers. So it is possible that uh, we can introduce 1000 arithmetic means between which numbers? 1 and 1.5. It is possible. Okay. So this is about arithmetic mean. Uh, you must have heard that uh, 
any three numbers in arithmetic progression may be taken. I'm not saying must be taken, may be taken as a minus d, a, a plus d. Are these terms in arithmetic progression? Yes, they are. Now don't say, but sir, first term is not a. See, first term is usually taken as a. It is not hard and fast rule that it should be a, right? And difference should be constant. In some cases, it can be 11,000 D also, right? So difference between any two consecutive terms must be constant. That is the only requirement. So are these three terms in AP? Yes, they are. Now, what is the advantage of taking these three terms in AP? If you add them, you directly get 3A. D is eliminated. This is the advantage. Four terms in AP, AP may be taken as A minus 3D, A minus D, A plus D, A plus 3D. Are these terms in AP? Don't say no. Say yes. Why? Because difference between two consecutive terms is always constant 2D. So it is an AP. Five terms in AP may be taken as A minus 2D, A minus D, A, A plus D and A plus 2D. Okay. So you should know this much about arithmetic progression. Now I'm asking you one intelligent question. You should try to answer that. If we know just a minute. If we know S13 and S22, can we find any term of the, these are basically for arithmetic progression. If we know S3 and S22, can we find any particular term of an arithmetic progression? And secondly, if we know T11, then we can find some of how many terms? Now let me answer the question. See, what is S13? It is 13 by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d. n minus 1 means 13 minus 1. So 12d. I hope this is clear to you. S13 is 13 upon 2 into in bracket 2a plus n minus 1 into d. 2a plus 12d. From that we can get a plus 6d. Right? Now a plus 6d happens to be the seventh term. So if we are given some of the first 13 terms of an arithmetic progression, then we can directly tell T7. If I ask you what is T6, what is any other term? No, not possible. Only T7 is possible. What about S22? S22 is 22 by 2, that is 11. 2a plus 21d, not possible. See. One equation is not sufficient to find the values of two unknowns, A and D. But if we know A plus 6D, it is nothing but T7. But here, if you try to divide by 2, you get A plus 21 upon 2. <laughs> no, we are not interested. Okay. So if the conclusion is, if some of the first n terms is known where n is even, then we cannot find any particular or rather any term of an AP. But if we know SN where N is odd, then we definitely find TN. Not for all values of N. Now, what is the relation between 13 and 7? 13 plus 1 upon 2 is 7. Okay. Now, the last question. Suppose we are given T11. T11 means what? A plus 10D is given. From that, can we find 2a plus 20d? Yes, just multiply it by 2. Now, what is S21? Tell me. It is 21 upon 2. 2a plus 21 minus 1. 20. Yes, 
this is known. So if we know T11, then we can find only one sum that is S21. Why can't we find other logic is simple. There are two unknowns A and D. To get the values of two unknowns, we need two equations. But to get S21, we need 2A plus 20D. Now A plus 10D is known. And that is why 2A plus 20D can be obtained. Of course, this will not be asked in exam. Uh, actually, one part uh, we have to discuss regarding uh, arithmetic progression. Properties of arithmetic progression. Uh, if uh, numbers are in AP, then progression obtained by adding or subtracting the same number from all the numbers also given arithmetic progression. Or in other words, if A, B, C, D are in AP, then A plus minus K, B plus minus K, C plus minus K, plus minus K and D plus minus K are also in AP. Not only that, AC, then uh, BC, I'm sorry, K I'm considering, right? So AK, BK, CK, BK are also in AP. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4. Are these in AP? Yes. Multiply by 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40. Are these numbers in AP? Yes, they are. Not only that, if we divide by the same non-zero number that is there, how can you divide by zero? A by K, B upon K, C upon K, D upon K are also in arithmetic progression. Is that clear? Now, the next progression is geometric progression. In case of arithmetic progression, the difference between two consecutive terms is constant. If the ratio of two consecutive terms is constant, then the terms are said to be in geometric sequence, that is geometric progression. GP is the standard short form. So if for a sequence, Tn plus 1, upon Tn is always constant. Now that constant is denoted by small r and it is called as common ratio of the GP. So if the ratio of any two consecutive terms is constant, then that sequence is called as geometric sequence. For example, just a minute. For example, 4 minus 8, 16 minus 32. Are these terms in GP? Yes, they are. Because the ratio of two consecutive terms is constant. It is minus 2. So if we take first term, in case of GP also, first term is usually taken as A and common ratio as R, then general geometric progression is A, AR, AR square, AR cube, and so on. Now, if you use common sense, in the first term, what is index of R? Don't say there is no term in R. It is R raised to 0. In the second, 1. In the third, 2. In the fourth term, index of R is 3. So what will be Tn? It will be A into R raised to n minus 1. I hope you will not write this as AR raised to n minus 1. This is wrong. Because it is not a raised to n minus 1 into. It is a into what? r raised to n minus 1. Okay. So this is nothing but nth term of geometry progression. Now, in this case also, uh, before that, uh, let me ask you one thing. Can I say that 1, 1, 1 are in uh, geometry progression? Yes. Yes, sir. Are these in arithmetic progression? Yes. Yes. Yes, very good. These are both in arithmetic progression and in geometric progression. Why? Because the difference between two consecutive terms is constant, right? And the ratio of two consecutive terms is also constant. So these terms are both in 
arithmetic progression as well as in geometric progression. Okay. Uh, before we find some of the first n terms of geometric progression, uh, let me tell you that three terms in geometric progression may be taken as, I'm not saying must be taken as, may be taken as what? A upon R, A R. First check whether these are in GP or not. Yes, they are in GP. Now, what is the advantage of taking these as three terms in GP? Because usually we are given the product. Take the product. You will notice that R gets cancelled and you get A cube. Of course, A is not the first term here. A is the second term. Similarly, four terms in geometry, I'm sorry, Yes, three is over. Uh, four, four terms in geometric progression may be taken as A upon R cube, A upon R, A R, A R cube. Please check whether these terms are in GP or not. Yes, they are. Common ratio is R square. Okay. Five terms in GP may be taken as A upon R square, A upon R, A, A R, and A R square. Okay. Yes. Now, next important thing is find some of the first n terms of geometric progression. Actually, in the textbook, they have given that if Sn is A plus AR plus AR square up to what? AR raised to n minus 1, then they say that Sn is A into 1 minus R raised to N upon 1 minus R if R is less than 1 and it is A into R raised to N minus 1 upon R minus 1 if R is greater than 1. Now tell me, are these two formally different? No, they are the same because if you multiply, see the cursor. If you multiply numerator and denominator of uh, this by minus one from this, you can obtain this. Okay. But if R is greater than one, usually we go for this formula. Now tell me what happens if R is one. Can you tell me the sum if common ratio is one? Yes. Tell me the answer. My question is if common ratio is one, what will be the sum of the first? in terms of geometric progression. Please type your answer in chat box. Okay, one student is saying, come on. Mm -mm. How can you say zero? One is saying not defined because if R is one denominator vanishes, come on. See, this formula in any of these two forms can be used if R is not equal to one. But if R is one, tell me what will be the terms? A plus A plus A. How many times? N times. If you add A, N times, you are going to get N into A. So how can you say some students, they are saying one, some are saying zero, some are saying not defined, some are saying one. Come on. If common ratio is one, each term will be small a. And if you add a n times, you are going to get n into a, that is n a. See, this formula, uh, actually, it's already uh, 7.30, so we'll discuss the proof in the next lecture. But these formulae are obtained by assuming that R is not one. Then only division by one minus R is valid, is defined. See, for R less than one means R cannot be one. Here R is greater than one means R cannot be one. But that doesn't mean that if R is one, sum is not defined. It is defined. No formula is required. Each term is A. If you add A n times, you get N into A. Okay. So that's it for today.